So in this video I want to talk to you about how to maintain a wildlife pond and I'm going to talk particularly about two plants that are a little bit invasive and cause a lot of problems and I'm always getting asked about them on social media and Twitter so hopefully this will clear up any questions you've got. Now the two plants I want to talk to you about are greater reed mace or great reed mace like this tall leafy plant behind me and blanket weed which of course is a big problem for most ponds particularly particularly in their establishment or formative years. Now if we start with a reed mace as you can see it's a bit of a brute of a, of a plant and it's one that will soon make its way through a water body even up to three foot deep it can establish quite well grow through that depth of water to then reach the sunlight and many of you may know it as effectively the sausage plant of the pond world it's you know the lovely kind of brown flower heads that you would see more synonymous with our sort of canals or edges of lakes but however in a bigger pond like this this is one that I created <coughs> sort of four or five years ago and it's about 15 meters by 18 meters and it, it obviously because it's an open water body and it's in the countryside you're more likely to the seeds they spread by seeds dropping in and establishing themselves Ooh, what have we got sorry dragonfly check nice first emperor of the year just darting around behind me fantastic to see oh clashing with another one sorry slightly distra distracted there but nice to see um so as you can see it's already doing really well for wildlife this pond but the reed mace as you can see behind me is really spreading quite profusely through the pond and in time it will actually take over create a vegetative mat and, and there really will be a, a huge decrease in the amount of wildlife that can thrive and survive here and all your open water will be swamped out so the way it spreads is by roots or the runners if you like and it spreads sideways across the soil um, and because of course in the ponds that I design and build they are um, built using a layer of fleece then the liner then another layer of fleece and then four to six inches of subsoil it creates a very natural effect but of course this replicates how this plant would grow or the environment that this plant would grow in in the wild so it's obviously going to really like these conditions now to get rid of it is quite simple and by grabbing lower down on the, at the base of the, the plant um, don't grab or don't pull too hard because you can snap the vegetated part of the plant off and then of course the root is left and it'll just regrow and it'll be laughing at you in a few weeks time so the best part the best way to do it is grab lower down and just gently kind of rock backwards and forwards until you feel the root freeing itself from the soil there you go and you can see here that white underneath sort of fleshy fleshy root where it has grown from the previous plant so it's very good at establishing and quite quickly you can just see there the white roots coming out the side to go on to, to spread further so lovely plant but just wrong plant for this situation so when you've got a plant out of the water make sure have a check around it first make sure there's no dragonfly damselfly larvae pond snails uh, newts baby frogs that kind of thing and just foot's a bit stuck uh, put it on the deck or the, the side of the pond let it dry out there for a day or two and give anything like water lice the small invertebrates that you can't really see that may be tangled up in those roots chance to drop back into the pond and of course you know go on to live their lives but once that is dried out and you can't see any form of life on them put it in your compost heap and it will na naturally rot down in time uh, and create some nice compost so that's one thing you can do so that's the best way to take it out of the pond uh, then if we come on to the uh, blanket weed which as you can see creates these lovely candy floss like rafts of vegetation which there's a bit of a pig and the problem with this plant is once it's established or while it's establishing it really can smother out a lot of the vegetation and make it difficult for it to establish and thrive so once you've got it out of the pond just again put it on the side check for any invertebrates amphibians first let it dry out for a, a, a day or two uh, and things to drop back in but as you're pulling it out because it is quite a, a, a sometimes you can get quite big rafts of it as you're raking it in once it's on the side have a check through it because it's easy to find you know sort of newts and frogs that have become tangled up in it whilst it's being 
dragged in. So again, have a good thorough look through that to make sure there's nothing in there because of course they can't get out if it's folded over on itself. So lay it out over a bigger area again if you can, but on the pond edge so that things have got not very far to get back into the pond. So time of year to do these works. Now it's coming up towards the end of May now. Most of the tadpoles have kind of turned into froglets or turned into froglets, so they are sort of heading out of the pond. But really, if you can, try and avoid the early phases of spring when you know tadpoles, of course, are going to be you know swimming through this lot, and and they do eat blanket weed, so it is uh, a bit of a food source as well for them in their early stages. So during the summer months is is not a bad time to do it, particularly as you get later on through the summer once things have kind of moved out of the pond a bit more and frogs and newts, once they've bred and finished their life cycle, will actually move off a lot of the time, particularly towards the autumn. Uh, you can do this in the winter of course, but not very many people will want to put on a pair of these chest waders in the middle of winter and get in the pond. I've done it, it's not nice, take my word for it. Um, <laughs> so really the best time is kind of mid to late summer if you can, but um, again, just check, keep checking all the time to make sure there's no life in what you're taking out or you are minimizing uh, the risk to anything. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea as to uh, how to get rid of the uh, the two plants out of your pond and to combat particularly the blanket weed the best way you can do this is by uh, increasing your floating what I would call your floating leaf plants so things like your fringed water lily broadleaf pond weed these are native uh, plants that you can put in your pond and they will spread nicely equally lilies if you've got some bigger lilies in the pond they will do a good job of covering the water surface and that's key because blanket weed actually likes shallow margins where obviously the water warms up quicker which is great for the invertebrates but equally it encourages the blanket weed now um, the, like I say to establish these plants is going to be great uh, a great benefit for you because that will just shade the water surface out bring the water temperatures down a bit and let the you know uh, the blanket weed will then struggle to establish particularly in these areas as you can see it's still establishing itself within the middle of the pond um, so the best way to do that is like I say get in and if you don't have chest waders of course you can do this from the edges you know you don't have to get in your pond you know the best way is to disturb less wildlife and do it from the edges but of course on a pond this size it becomes a bit tricky so uh, I usually use like a what I call a spring rake or a metal rake and you can just literally just tease the vegetation out again pull it back towards you gently see if there's any newts or anything on it uh, put it on the side and then let it dry out and uh, put it in the compost heap in a day or two. Um, so hopefully that's given you a good idea as to how you can combat. Oh, and barley straw, by the way. Uh, barley straw is a good one. People ask about that a lot. And yes, you can put some bales of barley straw in the pond and that will really help with the blanket weed as well. So once you've got the majority of it out and you've freed up uh, a lot of the, uh, the water body itself, put some barley straw in if you want to. And that will, of course, just you know keep the, uh, the, the blanket weed at bay. So hopefully that's answered any questions you've got. If you have any more, please comment below uh, and feel free to subscribe to the channel. And as I say, I, I have done uh, another video on how to make a wildlife barrel pond or a barrel pond if you like. Uh, for those of you looking to do a pond and you want to, you, but you've only got a small space, uh, I'll put a link to the video uh, in this video now. Uh, and please feel free to subscribe to the channel as I say and I'll be sure to bring you more videos of how you can help wildlife in your own garden, how you can make your own wildlife pond and many more topics to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.